Good evening, folks. We just finished our Bay Area uh, Lutheran meet, uh, Ministries meeting tonight, uh, talking about our upcoming joint ascension service between the five congregations and in the Balm ministry. And we are going to go ahead with a Balm service, but it will for ascension, but it will be a virtual service. So we. Um, once again, a link will be provided uh, so that folks are able to watch that special worship service with uh, Pastor Stanky doing the uh, liturgy and Pastor Rich from St. John's doing the uh, uh, preaching for that service. Uh, and more details will come uh, as, as they formulate as to whether or not we will have um, a choir that will participate in some way, shape, or form uh, with that service. And so tonight as we gather together for uh, our, our devotion, I will use the order for evening devotion, and we will be uh, working, continuing to work our way through the book of Ephesians, and tonight we're in the first section of chapter 5. So we begin then, Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness, let it shine in our hearts and lives. Amen. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading is from Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 21. Therefore, be imitators of God as his dearly loved children. And walk in love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But do not let sexual immorality, any kind of impurity or greed, even be mentioned among you, as it is proper for the saints. Obscenity, foolish talk, and coarse joking are also out of place. Instead, give thanks. Certainly you are aware of this. No immoral, impure, or greedy person. Such a person is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ who is God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. It is because of these things that the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. So do not share in what they do. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. Therefore it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Consider carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise people. Make the most of your time, because the days are evil. For this reason do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk on wine, which causes you to lose control. Instead, be filled with the Spirit by speaking to another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your hearts to the Lord, by always giving thanks for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by submitting to one another in reverence for Christ. As we listen to this section of God's word, what a challenge is placed in front of us in the very first verse. As we live our lives as children of God, God calls us to be imitators of God. As his dearly loved children, we are to imitate the love that he has for us. We are to imitate the forgiveness that he has shown to us. We are to imitate his entire example as to how to deal with individual people and with groups of people. To be patient, understanding, merciful, graceful, as we work for the good of others, not for ourselves. It's a powerful example that we have. When we try to be an imitator of God, that would be a full-time job. And God does so much for us takes care of so many needs of ours. And now he calls upon us to do that for others. As his children, through faith, 
brought to faith by the grace of God and the work of the Holy Spirit, that is now how we are called to live. And then he begins to give us an example of how our life becomes a fragrant offering back to God, a thanksgiving offering for all that he has done for us. You know, we avoid any kind of impurity. We avoid greed, foolish talk, coarse joking. So easy to fall into those type of things because they always get a reaction out of people. And yet God says those are improper for us as his children. And then he says, let no one deceive you with empty words. In other words, we need to be staying in God's word so that we understand the truth of God's word and that that way no one will ever be able to, to guide us down the wrong path with empty, false uh, notions and ideas because we will recognize them as what they are if we are grounded in the word of God. And then he tells us to stop living the way that we lived in the darkness of sin because now we have seen the light. The light that comes through faith, the light that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he has called us now to the light that saves us for all eternity. And light and darkness do not coexist. You're either in the dark or you're in the light. You can't be partway in between. And the Lord calls us to live in the light, to be a light shining into the darkness that leads people out of that darkness. You know, lots of us have, have had the opportunity to be someplace where it gets extremely dark. If you've ever been in the woods at, on a dark, cloudy night where there are absolutely no stars, no moon, no form of light visible at all, you begin to understand what darkness really is and how scary it is and how many dangers exist in that darkness that, that once we turn on a flashlight or a lantern, we're easily able to avoid because of the light. Well, the light for us spiritually is God's word. And as we're in that light, it exposes all of the sinful behavior that would so easily entangle and trap us with the intent to harm us for all eternity. And so the more that we're in the word of God, the more that light shines. It shines brighter so that we see clearer and we recognize the temptations of Satan, the lies that he tells us, and that we cling to the truth of God's word. And then he says to be wise, to walk carefully and be wise because the days are evil. There's all kinds of temptation around us, all kinds of things that would attempt to lure us away from God and his word and making that word the number one priority in our lives. And true wisdom comes through the word of God as we grow in our understanding of what God has done for us in our Savior Jesus Christ and what is waiting for us, and what the goal of this life is, and what the purpose of our day-to-day -day lives are. But God has defined all of that on the pages of Scripture. And so the more that we're in the Word, the better understanding we have, and the less likely it will be that we will be led astray by these false things. And then he says, instead of messing around with the vices of this world, to spend time in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with our hearts to God. What a wonderful way to show our thankfulness to God for all that he has done for us, all that he continues to do. And then he introduces the concept of submitting in verse 21, a concept that he will go into more depth with in the following verses tomorrow. But right now it's talking about submitting to Christ in reverence and in love, recognizing that he is God, recognizing that he loves us and how much he has done for us. It's only right then that we would, in thankfulness and in appreciation for all that he has done, hold him with high regard and respect in our lives. And, and if God says something's wrong, if the Bible defines something as a sin, well, then we call it a sin as well. And we respect what the Lord says. And we make every effort then to, to follow his decrees, to give glory to God. Even though our sinful flesh might be drawn to certain sins more than others, and we may have a weakness towards them, 
out of reverence for Christ, we deny our sinful flesh what it wants, and we give ourselves to the truth of God's word as we let that light shine and point out the evil of that sinful temptation so that we walk away from it with God's help and give, give our thanks and glory to God. We continue then with Luther's evening prayer. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And may the blessing of the eternal God be upon us, his light to guide us, his presence to shelter us, his peace to unite us. Amen.